The Perfect Storm is a 2000 American biographical disaster drama film directed by Wolfgang Peterson. And based on the 1997 creative non-fiction book of the same name by Sebastian Junger. Based on a true story, the film tells of the courageous men and women who risk their lives every working day, pitting their fishing boats and rescue vessels against the capricious forces of nature. Their worst fears are realized at sea on Halloween of 1991, when they are confronted by three raging weather fronts which unexpectedly collide to produce the greatest, fiercest storm in modern history, the perfect storm. Let's find out in movie how they combat with the fiercest storm. The movie begins in a ship port, Gloucester, Massachusetts, where people are busy displaying and selling their day's catch of fish. Meanwhile Christina Cotter, a elegant lady, has a nightmare about a storm while she is sleeping, she wakes up breathless and yelling Bobby's name. The following day, the commercial swordfishing vessel Andrea Gale returns to port with a poor catch. Christina Cotter's boyfriend was also on the ship and has also arrived, so she is eager to meet him. Everyone welcomes the boat's boarders at the port. When the ship's captain, Bob Brown, meets with Linda to discuss the fish catch, she informs him that the Ben's pulley has been misplaced. He got into an argument with Linda's companion, and Linda affirms she will pay for it. In the meantime, workers in the dock are busy counting and freezing the fish. The ledger is then distributed to the boat members, after which Bill has a brief conversation with other members about the Florida, and Bob Brown mocks and taunts Captain Billy Tyne over his recent cold streak. Bill promises Bob that the next time he will give him a good catch because he will fish the Grand Banks, but Bob continues to make ridicule of him. While others have fun at the club, Murph waits for his ex and son to meet them. Then Bill approaches them and informs them that they are once again going for a catch and that they can choose whether or not to accompany him. Christina, Bobby Shatford's girlfriend, is disappointed when Bobby is absent once more. Christina is aware that he wants to support her after they discuss it. Except for one crew member, the others decide to travel despite being torn between spending time with their loved ones and the opportunity to work and make money. The risk is high because the season is coming to a close. The following day, when Captain Bill is busy unloading groceries, Linda meets with him. He tells her about his upbringing and his passion of sea. While Sully is working on something for his friend, Billy approaches him and insists that he join him on a fishing expedition. Sully agrees. The group departed for the Grand Banks the following day after visiting with their loved ones. Bobby reads his girlfriend's letter to him as they are traveling. Bill is approached by a crew member who comments that he appears happy while they are at sea. Bill replies that his home is in Florida, where his ex-wife and children reside. A staff member at Channel 9 Newsroom in Boston predicted the weather using graphics of Sable Island, where the Andrea Gale is going, and of Bermuda, where a ship named Mistral is sailing. Bill gives the crew members the command to begin fishing when they are 342 kilometers from the Grand Bank. While waiting for the catch at night, Sully and Murph got into an argument. Bill patched up their quarrel, and after that they began to catch a lot of large fish. Back at the port, Christina decorated her house with ethyl, and the two of them watched news reports about the impending storm in Elis, which is 83 miles from Sable and in Roin 135 miles from Bermuda. Due to the strong waves, the giant fish Bob caught turned out to be a shark, which approached the ship and bit Bob's leg before being shot by a crew member. The following morning, half of the crew is fishing while the other half is eating and watching films. During this time, Bob visits Billy and discusses the fish. The group agrees when Billy asks to take them farther offshore in the pursuit of where the fish are. One evening when they were laying lines, an accident occurs and Murph is thrown overboard. Ironically, Sully is the first to dive into the water. Along with Bob, Murph is saved. Bill gives him tetanus injection and some medicine, then the Murph pays gratitude to Bob, where he tells Murph about Sully, that he is the first to save his life. Murph then goes to Sully and thanks him and opens the door of friendship. They both decides to forget their past and smiles. After a significant storm wave strikes the ship in the evening, Michael, also known as Bugsy, approaches the captain and informs him that the crew wants to speak with him. The captain asks him to take over while he goes to meet crew. Bobby tells the captain that he has a horrible feeling about the situation since first a shark attacks on them, then Murph overturns into the water, and then there is a storm. Alfred Pierre then remarks that we have had slumps before, but he and Bill had never experienced these kinds of catastrophes. As they are all terrified, Bill retorted that if they want to go home, which is the case, he will get angry with them. He then gave Alfred Pierre the order to inform them all that they are going to Flemish Cap to go fishing then all agrees to go farther. Billy speaks on the radio with Linda Greenlaw, 
another captain whose returns have performed better than his, as the Andrea Gale sets sail. She informs him that something evil is being kicked here by someone at the back of the bank. Then, when he replies that he is travelling to Flemish Cap, as she questions him about his position and warns him that the area is dark and that a gale force is approaching from Sable Island and Bermuda, she warns him to be careful because this may be a triple header. Everyone on board the ship is really thrilled when they reach the Flemish Cap the next day and acquire a good catch of a lot of fish. As they find great success further out, Billy informs them that there is a large storm in their path. The crew decides to go for it, knowing that the ride will be rough. Back in a Boston newsroom, a meteorologist is bewildered by what is happening to the two weather systems that he has been observing. It looks like they will collide. The news airs the report, and soon the small town of Gloucester realizes what is happening, while a severe storm hits the ship Mistral. Edie informs the captain that she is going to scream for help and the captain tells her the standard procedures during this situation that they have to lie a hull, beam to the waves, slip sideways, but Edie did not listen to him as she wants to save her life. She then tells Melissa to get on radio. While Captain still tells them that it's his sopping wet and she will be weeping in the wind. Melissa talks over the radio and informs that they are on 32-foot sailing vessel, Mistral and their position is 39.49 north and she screams for help. Loads of fish catch are being held on the ship Andrea Gale in the meantime. The ice machine is not working, and Bugsy informs Captain Bill of this. Then Bill informs the rest of the team about the machine that makes ice, and they depart for home since they need to sell the fish at the market before it spoils. Bill also informs them about the 40-50 to 50 foot waves and gale force winds that are really bad in their path to home. Bill tells them there is something big and rough to be worried about, and they have to stay here until the storm calms down and they can reach the home safely. But Bob informs him that they have 60,000 pounds of fish with them and it will be spoiled if they wait for a couple of days. So after all this discussion they decided that they can make through it. While on the other side the Mistral ship's crew has been trying to call for help over the radio, but then all of a sudden Melissa heard someone announce their rescue. She became happy and informed Edie about the rescue. It is an Air Force rescue team, and they inform the boat's passengers that they are going to evacuate each person from the deck one at a time. The aircraft is being piloted by Daryl. As the plane descends and deploys a rescue basket, a stronger storm wave strikes the boat, tossing its occupants into the water. First to be saved is Alexander. To save the other two passengers on the boat Mistral, Sergeant Jeremy dives into the water. Members eat and unwind while aboard Andrea Gale. In spite of the severe storm, Captain Bill is having fun sailing. The ship Andrea Gale's antenna breaks while traveling during a storm. Due to an antenna break, Captain Linda calls Captain Bill on the radio, but they are unable to hear her. But she keeps telling them that the storms are colliding and going to blow up. After some time Bill hears her and tells her about his location, when she matches the coordinates, she found out that they are near to collide, she warns them and tells them to see facts and move back. Due to antenna breakage they cannot hear her properly. Bobby Shatford, a novice fisherman, makes an attempt to fix it but is helpless to prevent the antenna from breaking off and flying away. When the air rescue finds where the ship Andrea Gale is and where they are from. They are enraged and upset because, as always, Gloucester forced them into a dangerous situation. The Andrea Gale experiences a number of issues, including 40-foot waves rushing onto the deck. A broken stabilizer banging the ship's side with a slack anchor, and two crew members being briefly thrown overboard. Friends and family worry and wait for updates as the ship tries to travel through roiling waves and howling gusts. Bill battles the storm as he climbs onto the deck to secure the anchor. Air Rescue's helicopter similarly runs out of fuel and crashes into the water, but Captain Darrell orders his crew to get out of the aircraft before it hits the water. Bill gives the crew on the ship the order to repair a window that was damaged by the slack anchor, but they are unable to do so. Sully and Bugsy struggle and tumble into the water, but Bob and the other members manage to save them. Billy manages to turn the boat around successfully. The ship, however, runs into a huge rogue wave. The wave crests before the boat can reach the top, so they try to drive the boat over it, but it flips over instead. Bobby is the sole crew member who is able to escape the living quarters after Billy decides to sink the ship with it. He comes to the top and sees Andrea Gale correct herself before plunging stern first into the Atlantic. As the swiftly escalating swell takes him away, Bobby says his final goodbyes in silence to his fiancée and loved ones. At the memorial, Linda reads the eulogy because there are no survivors. Later, as she returns to the sea, she thinks of Billy. And with this the movie ends.
If you like our content, please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss our new video. Thanks for watching.